Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, brethren, I'm here again coming to you with words from the Word. And uh, I trust that as you listen day by day to words from the Word, that you would find something that you can apply to your life. Something that will help you to make that necessary change. Something from the Word that will show you, hey, this is for me. I trust that as God shows that to each and every one of us, that we will be willing to do that which is right in His sight. We are looking at this matter of revival. God, would you not revive us again? Restore unto us the joy of salvation. Revive us like fire boils water. That was our text we started in several mornings ago. We are now looking at the New Testament church. And if you would ask Peter, James, John, Mary, any of the others, what happened? What did they experience? They would have said, the Lord came down among us. And we were overwhelmed with the sense of the presence of God. Now, William P. Mackey in the fourth stanza, he says, revive us again. Which means that we were revived before. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. That's the prayer of our hearts, that God would revive us. So let's see when the New Testament church was revived, what happened. This is what happened in Acts chapter 4, verse 23 to 31. The Bible said, And being let go, they went to their own company, and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and sea and all that in them is. Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up. The rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Lord the holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Not only we find this happening in the book of Acts, it also happened when Wesley and Whitfield preached in the revival in 1859 in the Valley of Wales in 1904. This is what happened when God's people pray for revival. When God in His sovereign will is pleased to answer their prayer and render heaven and come down. Folks, we need revival. But one may say, Pastor, why do you think that we need revival? Why do you think that we need revival? What are some of the evidence that we need revival? The answer to such a question can always be found in two places. One, it can be found in the Word. Yeah, it can be found in the Word. And two, it can be found in the church. When we look in God's Word, we see the need that exists way back in Isaiah's day, and it is similar to ours today. Remember what is said in Isaiah 64, verse 1 and on? O that thou wouldest render heaven, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. And when the melting fire burn it, the fire causeth the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. He said, When thou didst terrible things, which we look not for, thou camest down, and the mountains flowed down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by ear, Neither have the eye seen, O God, besides thee, what he had prepared for him that waited for him. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and walketh righteousness. 
Those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wrath. For we have sinned in those his countenance, and we shall be saved. But we all are as unclean things, and all our righteousness are as filter rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquity like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirred up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us, and has consumed us because of thine iniquity. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father, we are the clay, thou art our potter, we are all the works of thy hand. Be not a rod very sore, O Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people, thy holy cities are a wilderness, Zion is a wilderness, Jerusalem a desolation. Our holy and our beautiful house, where our Father praised thee, is bound up with fire, and all our pleasant things are laid waste. Now, as I read this, we notice that there were great mountains, obstacles were hindering God's blessings from these people. They were hindering the blessings of God. Obstacles were doing that. Look at verse 1. O oh, that thou wouldest render heaven, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. So, I want to ask a question. Is it true that there are things that stand in our way? Could I say that there are obstacles? I am sure that you and I would be honest and say yes. So, if it is yes, then what are some of these mountains that stand before us? What are some of these mountains that stand before you and whenever you seek to go forward, they just block you. You've got this desire to live for God. But every time you seek to go forward, something just block you from going forward. What are they? What are they? Some people say times are hard. I want to serve God. But because times are so hard, I can't find the time to be in church. Some say the shortage of money. If I had more money, if I could afford it, I would be serving God better. But because I cannot afford it, I got to be out there doing this and doing that. And it takes away from me serving God. Some people say, needs are not met. Because my needs are not met, I got to find a way how to meet these needs. Some people say, I'm walking too many hours, can't find time to serve it. For some, it is some besetting sin. So, what is that mountain that seems to be blocking you? Your mountain may not be my mountain. My mountain may not be your mountain. That mountain, God is ready to make it flow down at His presence. The question is, where is God in your life? The mountain that is hindering you, God is ready for that mountain to flow down or oh, at His presence. But where is God in regards to this? In verse 5 of chapter 64, there was a great deal of open sin in Isaiah's day. Great deal of open sin. In verse 5 it says, Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and walketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wrath. For we have sinned. In those is continuance, and we shall be saved. Verse 6, he says, But we are all as unclean things, and our righteousnesses are as filter rags, and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquity, like the wind having taken us away. Notice the pronoun that Isaiah constantly used. He said, we. He included himself. He did not say the people. He said, we. So as I look at this text, he said, we are unclean. And our righteousness is as filter words. And our iniquity, like the wind, have taken us away. It's the iniquity, the sins of the people have taken them away from serving God. And Isaiah acknowledged this. Notice in verse 7, there were prayerlessness. He said in verse 7, And there is none that calleth upon thy name. Could you imagine? A people that are called by the name of God, 
have reached the place now where they are not calling upon the name of the Lord. And there's none that call it upon thy name that store it up himself to take hold of thee. Wow. Notice what prayer does. Prayer stores you to take hold of God. For thou hast hide thy face from us and hast consumed us because of our iniquity. Notice what Isaiah said. He said, the iniquity of the people has caused God to consume them. So that happened because of prayerlessness. And then I noticed the judgment of God was upon the people. In verse number 9 of chapter 64, Isaiah says, Be not wrath very so, O Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see we beseech thee, we are all thy people. Wow, judgment has come upon them. And Isaiah is telling God, remember us, O God, remember us, we are all your people. And then the holy city was in a state of desolation. Hmm. That reminds me, of the church. How is the church today? In Isaiah 64, verse 10, 11, he said, The holy city is a wilderness. Zion is a wilderness and Jerusalem a desolation. Our holy and our beautiful house, where our fathers praise thee, is bound up with fire. And all our pleasant things are laid waste. Wow. Wow. As you look at what was happening, These were the mountains, the obstacles that hindered God's blessing. What is it that is hindering you from being blessed by God? What is it that is preventing you from being revived? Oh, how we walk tireless hours, hoping that we would get more. But the truth of the matter is, we don't have no more. Oh, we're just destroying our health to get well, to, to try to buy back our health. I pray that these words would encourage your heart. And if there's something that God said to you that you will do, and let him or be your guide and help you through all of this. My time is up, but I'll be back next morning. And we look at when we look into our churches, we must recognize the desperate need of revival. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for reminding us how we, Lord, need to be revived, how we need to let you come in and take you over, how we need to cast these things aside, how we need to allow those mountains to flow to you, Lord, and let you melt those mountains. Because we trying to climb over them, God, we are not getting to the top. It's only you that will help us. So have your way now. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. Bless your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May God bless you all to have a great day in the Lord. And remember, Share this devotion with a friend and a loved one.